Hi, I am so glad you guys made it to this segment, Math Tips for the Frustrated Algebra Student. Is this you? <laughs> Do you get to your tests and all of a sudden you go blank? Maybe you've done all the homework and all the homework made sense, but the test, you just don't recognize anything. Or perhaps you understood stuff in class, but when you got home to do your homework, it doesn't look anything like you did in class. It looks like Greek. Or worse yet, you're actually in class and your teacher does not make sense. So you feel like giving up. Did any of that sound familiar to you? Or perhaps all of it sounded familiar to you? I want you to take a close look at this segment. We're gonna talk about how to take notes, how to do your homework, and also how to study. A lot of students don't know how to study for a math test. So we'll cover that. But first of all, I wanna ask you something. What do you think is the most popular algebra question? The most popular question that all algebra teachers hear? Nope, it's not reading problems, it's not about factoring. When will I ever use this? <laughs> that is the most popular question and it's annoying, just so you know. But here's one thing I want you to understand. A lot of the math, you may not use it. Yeah, surprising, right? You think as a math teacher, I'd go, oh, it's all important. It is, there's some stuff that you will use. There's some stuff that I use all the time and I don't even realize that I'm using it when I'm budgeting, when I'm doing my finances. But unless you're gonna be an engineer or a computer scientist or a writer for some you know, geeky sci-fi you know, forensic show, which I love by the way, fandom, oh, okay. You probably aren't gonna use all the math that you're learning in some of these algebra classes. So here's the next question. Why are we required to learn it? If it's not so much about the math itself, then what is it about? It's to strengthen the critical thinking part of our brain. Did you realize when you're learning math, it actually uses different parts of your brain? Let's take a look at this picture here. Here's a picture of the brain, isn't it pretty? And all of its different segments, and all the segments are responsible for different duties. Here in the green is the temporal lobe. It's responsible for not only language, but as far as math is concerned, memory and learning. So learning one plus one equals two, or the definition of an absolute value, that's gonna use this part of the brain. However, do you see the big red part right there behind your forehead? That's called the frontal lobe. Now, it's responsible for consciousness and, and controlled behavior, but it also is responsible for problem solving, decision making, it regulates these sort of things, and this is where you use algebra. And this is why a lot of people struggle with it, is you're not using just one part of your brain, you're using two parts of your brain. And the algebra part is the part that we are trying to strengthen. When you get out in real life, we need you to be able to problem solve. You, we need you to make decisions without getting nervous. Now, one thing I want you to notice, both parts of the brain also regulate emotion. They're the only two parts that do that. So the two parts where you're learning math are also the two parts that regulate emotion. That's why some of you get a stress headache. You got two places here that's like working really hard but also you get frustrated and you get anxious. You may do all of your homework just fine and you get to the test and you go blank and you start to sweat and you start to get frustrated and your heart starts beating. It's normal. So let's get you past that part. Remember, it's, you know, don't give that excuse of, I'm never gonna use this, why do I have to learn this? It's so you can strengthen this part of your brain. So think of an algebra problem like a life problem, okay? Here you are, you're given some equation and you're asked to solve it. Here's your goal, you want x equals a number. So you need to figure out what tools do I have algebraically that's gonna get me from my equation to my solution. It's the same thing with life. Here you are here, you know, you're, you're a couple, you're about to have a baby, oh how exciting, and then one of you loses your job. You still have your bills, you still have to buy a crib, what are you gonna do? What tools do I have to get from here to here? Okay, where else can I apply? I can set up my resume. Uh, maybe I have family and friends who can help. I can call my creditors and ask if they can defer my payments for a while until I get past this slump. Maybe I can do a modification loan on our house. We can go and borrow. Yeah, all these things that you can do, but don't panic. That's this part of the brain, okay? So that's your goal in learning all of this. You are strengthening this part of the brain. So if you get a headache when you're learning math, you're doing it right, just like working out a muscle. So now let's take a look at taking notes. First of all, write everything down. 
even if it makes sense, what your teacher's saying, write it down and add your own notes. Some teachers, they give lots of examples, which is fine. It really works for some students, but some students need a little bit more. So if you're not sure how they got from step A to step B, write a little note to yourself and you know explain it to yourself why you're doing what you're doing. Also, sometimes your teacher might go a little fast if they're running out of time. So don't feel like, oh, you're behind, I don't get it. Just put a question mark and keep going. If you sit there and try to figure out, okay, now wait, how did they get here? I don't understand this step and they're three boards down now and you're behind. So write a quick question mark where you, where you got lost and then pick up after that. Also, go over your notes as immediately, as soon as you can, and make any corrections. Because sometimes, you know, it makes sense while you're writing it, but you're, you're listening, you're watching, you're writing, and sometimes you might miss something. So as soon as you can, go over your notes and go, oh, wait a minute, that's incomplete. I remember what they said. Or go ask your teacher or a friend and say, um, I'm missing something here. What, this doesn't make sense to me. And then you can correct it immediately. Also for some of you, using color can be very helpful. I mean, imagine a blank sheet of paper with nothing but, you know, black print on it. And then all of a sudden there's a word in red. Okay, guess where your eyes are gonna go? In red. And guess what page your eyes are gonna remember? Red. So give your, your brain more senses to think of it. Um, if it's a quadratic equation, circle it in red, maybe put parentheses in red to think to factor or something like that. Now let's take a look at some of the note, homework notes. First of all, give yourself white space and margin in your homework. Imagine reading a book that's just side to side, top to bottom, nothing but words. Your brain will explode, right? Your eyes and your brain needs white space in order to absorb the information. Do the same thing in your notes. I appreciate the fact that you wanna save paper. Buy recycled paper. Money's made out of paper and having to take a class again takes up a lot of resources, which you don't want to waste as well. So use a little bit more paper, give yourself some room and some white space. Also, don't procrastinate. If you're given homework on Thursday that's due Tuesday, don't wait till Monday night to do it. You've probably forgotten stuff. You're going to look back at your notes and it may not be as clear and as quick. Do a little bit every day if you can, and that way you don't forget. Also, check your answers and ask for help. A lot of teachers, they grade homework based on um, trying it. You know, did you try it? Was it complete? Was it neat? You know, neatness and completeness, which is awesome. Hey, I got five points. I got my homework. Yay. You can get full credit for all of your homework and still fail the tests and then fail the class. If you're practicing it wrong, it's a waste of your time. So check your answers. Be sure you're doing it correctly. Also, make a connection between your instructions and your problem. This is huge, highlight this one. This is for those of you who say, I can do my homework just fine, but I get to the test and I freeze. When you're doing your homework, odds are you're doing it in one section and you're doing 20 problems that are all alike. This section, I have to factor every problem. This section, I'm solving a linear equation. Great, and you do it and you do it and you do it. You're in a routine. When you get to the test and it's over three chapters and all of these problems are mixed in together, you need to be able to figure out, okay, wait, how is this problem different from this problem? And this is your key. Look at what are they asking me to do? Solve, okay? When I solve, I'm looking for my variable. My variable equals a number, okay? I need to whittle this down to get to that. How do I do that? What's in my way? That's where you make the connection. And if you do that while you're doing your homework and you actually talk yourself through it, I mean, physically, out loud, say, okay, I'm sorry. I mean, don't do it in a public place. You might get like sent away somewhere. But if you're home, talk to yourself and say, how do I get from here to here? Why did I subtract here? Why did I divide here? Why did I multiply here? Why did I move this here? What's my goal? If you can talk yourself through it while you're doing your homework and explain it to yourself or someone else, that's why working in groups is great, then when you get to the test and you get nervous, you can go, okay, wait, it's in here. What am I being asked to do? What does my result look like? How do I get from here to here? Okay, so be sure that you make that connection between the instructions and the problem. And last but not least, five and four kind of related, ask yourself, what is my goal? What is in my way? How is this different from the other problems? If you can answer those questions while doing your homework, then when you're on the test, it's the same questions.
okay? So don't forget, give yourself white space, don't procrastinate, check your answers and get help if you don't understand them. Make a connection between your instructions and problem and ask yourself some questions. So here are some techniques now for studying math. These are my favorite. First of all, spot check your homework. If you know your test is gonna be over two chapters, then take all of those sections of homework and literally spot check it. Close your eyes, go on the first page, this one. Okay, could I do that? And you don't even have to rewrite it. Spot check it first and go, okay, my instructions were this, I was asked to do that. Okay, I remember doing that. Okay, second section, this one. Oh, wow. Oh, I've forgotten about this. What did I do here? Oh, that's right. And then you kind of know where do you need to spend a little bit more time? What do you know and what do you don't? Spot check, doesn't take long. Then outguess your teacher. This is always a fun game. What do I think my teacher would put on the test? And then go through your homework and pick maybe three or four problems from each section that you think your teacher would ask. You know, easy ones, hard ones, be sure there are reading problems involved. Don't just stick to the stuff that you know. Try some of the more difficult ones as well. Also, make a cheat sheet. Now, before you get too excited, notice cheat is in quotes and you're not supposed to use it on the test unless your teacher says you can. The question is, if you were allowed a note card on a test, what would you put on it? Okay, what would you want on it? Then make it out and study that. Oh, I wish we could have a note card, then I could put all these formulas on it. Okay, make a note card with the formulas on it and study it. Put them on note cards, think about them, memorize them, you know, carry them around with you. If it's, you know, how to solve a problem, put it on a note card. The more you write it, the more you see it, the more likely your brain will access it when you're nervous. Also teach someone else. I know this is an old adage, but you really don't learn something until you teach it. So get into study groups, explain problems to other people, explain them to your, to your friends, to your parents, your roommates, wherever you are. Find somebody, explain it to them, and then it will stick a little bit better. And this is huge. Do not, do not, do not wait. Don't wait to ask questions. I've had so many students turn in their exam, several of the questions are blank, and then they wrote me a little note saying, I never really got section 2.3. Why are you telling me that now? Not, okay, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> it's like, why did you wait till now? I'm not scary. Some teachers are, I get it, you know, find somebody else. But, but most of your teachers, they're not scary. They want to answer your questions. And if, if asking in front of a class makes you nervous, Find a tutor, find another math teacher that will um, answer your questions maybe after school, but find somebody. There are a lot of resources out there, but don't wait until test time to admit you didn't get something. Don't let your pride keep you from passing. You can do this. If it takes you a little longer than somebody else, who cares, okay? I was always the last one to turn in my test. Do you think anybody remembers that? No, just me. Nobody else cared. Don't worry about everybody else. This is not a competition. The most lonely feeling is everybody in here gets it but me, and I guarantee you that is not the case. I've got students, oh my gosh, okay, little side note in here. I have students sitting on the front row, and I can just tell who they are, because they're sitting there going, oh, and they've got this yeah, ooh, light bulb understanding look on their face, and they're writing notes, and you know what they're thinking? <laughs> I have no idea what you're doing. I'm so lost, oh yes, I'm gonna drop this class as soon as I can. <laughs> okay, so just because they're not asking questions doesn't mean that they get it. So be brave, believe in yourself, and realize it's okay not to know everything. It's okay to not have it mastered yet. That's what the test is for. If the test isn't here yet, you've got time. But don't wait and be sure and ask questions. Okay, I'm off my soapbox. Next, study tips. So those were some techniques, but here's some things that were help. Water, you have to be hydrated, not only while you're learning the material, but in order to access the material. I know a lot of you, soda, coffee, you're going, I need my caffeine, I need to stay awake. They're great, but they dehydrate you. Drink it after, okay? Be sure you have it afterwards. Or drink it before, but also drink water. Water keeps you hydrated, and that's what your brain needs to make those connections. So if you wanna access information that's there, water. Also, research has shown that peppermint helps. Gum, but I know a lot of places don't let you have gum, but chewing the gum, but more importantly, the fact that it's peppermint, the smell, the taste, it opens up the synapses and helps you to recall information that's in your brain. Now, it has to be there to begin with. Hence, 
show up to class, take your notes, do your homework. But if it's there, Peppermint helps you access it. Now, the next three has to deal with your senses. Whenever you can, talk out loud. When you're doing your homework, when you're studying something, say it out loud, let your ears hear it. Write it down. If you've got a formula like uh, later on or maybe now if you're learning it, the quadratic formula, every time you have a problem that uses the quadratic formula, rewrite down the formula. You're, you're saying it, then write it, and that gives you a touch sense, you feel it, and then read it. Visual, and some of you may want to lose color. The more senses you use, hear, touch, vision, you're going to be able to access it. The more your brain has a chance to access it, the more likely it is to do it when you're nervous, okay? So talk out loud, write it down, and read it. Last but not least, start early. Don't wait until the day before the test to start studying. Study a little bit every day. Spot check your homework as you go. And that way when you get to the end, you know what you need to, to review and look over, okay? And my last tip, breathe. You also need oxygen. <laughs> Believe it or not, you need oxygen to study. Your brain needs to be hydrated and it needs air. It needs oxygen. Take a deep breath and just tell yourself, I've done my homework. I've corrected my homework. I know I did it right. I've taken notes. Therefore, I know the information is in here. All I have to do is calm down long enough to allow myself to access that information. I can do this. Breathe. Okay? So, I know you can do this. Math is challenging. Nobody's going to, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's not impossible, okay? It's a challenge. You can do it. And if you have questions, ask your friends, ask your teachers, ask your tutors, ask somebody. Don't let your pride keep you from passing, okay? So, we've got a lot more videos on factoring and solving equations and the like. So, be sure to look us up and hopefully we'll see you again soon.